This is something that I actually did not learn until I was in Advanced Calculus 2. The first time I saw this example, I was blown away and at the same time disappointed. I had this really, really tall, tall, tall Russian professor. He was super tall and he had a really cool thick accent. And he went on the board and he did this example. And the reason he did this example is because we had turned in a homework assignment and several of us did it wrong, including myself. So this is a good problem. So let me first read the problem carefully and then I'm going to explain why it's so important. The question is to give an example of two functions, f and g, such that these limits both do not exist, but the sum actually exists. So in calculus, you learn that if this limit exists and this limit exists, so if the individual limits exists, then the sum of the limits also exists. It's one of the first things you learn when you study limits in Calc 1. It's one of the limit laws, right? If the individual limits exist, then the sum exists. So this example clearly will prove that you can't go the other way. Just because the sum exists, it doesn't necessarily mean that the individual limits also exist. And that's what this example wants. It wants two functions so that you can show that you have the sum existing, but not the individual limits. So basically that means that you're not allowed to break it apart. So just because this exists, you can't do this. You can't say, oh, this is equal to limit x approaches a f of x plus limit x approaches a g of x. You can't do that normally, right? You're not allowed to do that unless the individual pieces exist. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So the easiest way to do it is this way, I think. Let's take f of x equal to 1 over x. And let's take g of x equal to negative 1 over x. And so now, note that if we look at the limit, as x approaches 0 of 1 over x, this does not exist. Okay, and, and we'll talk about y in a second. If you look at the limit, as x approaches 0 of negative 1 over x, it also does not exist. Clearly, if you plug in 0, you get 1 over 0. It doesn't make sense. If you look at the graph of 1 over x, it has a vertical asymptote here and a horizontal asymptote here, and it looks something like this. So as x approaches 0 from the left, you get negative infinity because it goes down forever. As x approaches 0 from the right, it goes up forever, so you get infinity. So this is not going to make sense. But here's the cool part. When you add these, if you take the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, which is 1 over x, and you add it to g of x, which is negative 1 over x, well, 1 over x plus negative 1 over x, that's going to be 0. And that's equal to 0. So we have an example of two limits that don't exist, right? But when you add up the functions and take the limit, it does exist. So just because the sum exists doesn't mean the individual limits exist. And so the point is here, when you're doing a proof, right? When you're doing a proof and you're trying to prove, like say I'm trying to prove that, say I'm trying to prove that, you know, I'm trying to show that this exists. And I remember the example I was doing, um, it was, it was uh, advanced calculus too, so it was a multivariable example. We didn't just have x approaching zero, we had something like x, y approaching zero, zero, right? Because it was an advanced calculus two class. But the professor did this example just to bring home the point, to drive home the point. So I did something like this. I said, oh, well, you know, because this exists, therefore, you know, the individual limits exist, which is incorrect. And so my entire proof was wrong and I don't think I got any credit. So it was a very um, harsh moment for me, but sometimes those harsh mathematical lessons are what you need and they really drive home the point. That example really helped me and I never made that mistake again, thanks to that professor's example. It's funny because I actually have given this example to students as an extra credit question on tests in Calc 1 classes and in Calc 2 classes. 
very few people get it right if I don't go over it in class or if I don't mention it or talk about it uh, briefly. So it's kind of hard uh, to come up with stuff like this on your own. At the same time, uh, once you've seen it, it's easy and it's simple. So something most calculus students uh, don't know. And so hopefully you understood this example and hopefully you take uh, something away from it. So yeah, until next time, keep doing mathematics.